We are this week in Clapham in South London, close to both Clapham Common and Battersea Park, plus the very cool and busy and lovely Brixton area full of restaurants and bars and markets. Here's a map of where we are in the area and as you can see we're very close to Clapham Common. It's just a short stroll from the house over to the park if you fancy a little picnic or whatever. So last week we were in a house that was available to buy, but this week we're doing something completely different. You told us on Instagram you wanted us to also shoot places available as vacation rentals. So as we aim to please, we're today showing you guys an Airbnb house that accommodates as many as 12 people if you want to get a group of friends or family together and come visit London. I know we have a lot of viewers who are not local but would love to come visit especially going forward and hopefully lockdown will be over for good. This lovely place is listed at 700 per night with a 10% weekly discount. If there's like 12 of you that's less than 60 pounds per night per person which is very affordable for this area and for the size and quality of this space. We'll leave a link of course below to the listing so that you can take a look if you're planning on coming to London. This is a five bedroom, four and a half bathroom home with a beautiful garden in the back and all the amenities you need for your stay. Let's start by taking a look from outside where you can see that this is a classic London style brick building on a quiet tree lined street. And when we head inside we first walk through this beautiful door with an intricate and unique glass pattern both on the side and on the top of the door which looks so cool when the sun shines through. And this is what I like most about this home, all the attention to unique and special details. It's not just a comfortable place to sleep in between sightseeing, it has its own charming special little details going on, you will see what I mean. Inside we're greeted by a hallway that leads you straight through the house and into the back garden that you can see there at the end. And again it's another one of those gorgeous details, the hardwood floor in the hallway is actually reclaimed antique French oak laid in a symmetrical pattern. One day I would love to have a hardwood floor just like this, either in these type of square patterns or in the classic herringbone so gorgeous and it reminds me so much of the grandiose crazy high ceiling to turn on the century apartments in Stockholm which makes sense since this house actually dates back to the turn of the century. There's just something about old wood, the luxury factor is instant. On the right you can see one of two reception rooms to relax in which now has two single beds made up so you can see what the house looks like when made ready for 12 people. There's a fireplace and nice art on the wall, don't ask me what it is because I'm definitely not an expert, but the decor in general in this place is very inviting. It doesn't feel like an impersonal hotel room just to sleep in. Also adding to the feel are of course the large windows letting in a lot of light from the street and that is something that can be seen throughout the house, there is tons of natural light everywhere. From here you can either walk straight into the kitchen or the second reception room, so let's start with the latter. This second reception room is a good size for a larger party and has these beautiful built-in asymmetrical bookshelves which frames yet another open fireplace. When we end up getting our own place we're dreaming of having bespoke bookshelves like this. Actually, let me show you a photo of the ones we want to get. Picture this but in white, how gorgeous. Speaking of getting our own place, I know we said that we would take you along when we go hunting for a home to buy for ourselves, but well, our plans have changed a little bit. We thought we'd look at 50, 60, 90 places before finding that one gem to buy, but well, the third flat we viewed, we fell totally in love with. So we made an offer and it's kind of like we can't believe it ourselves yet, so stay tuned, we will let you know how things progress, of course. The reception room leads down into the open kitchen dining room and I just love the steps down from the living room into the dining area. It gives the room a sense of luxury and the stairs become like a natural room divider between the two without the wall hindering the eyesight or this sense of openness. This type of half stairs always makes me think of the case study houses in LA, you know the super modernistic architecture places that were usually open like this but with height differences to signify the different areas of the house. By the way, if you want to see more house tours on this channel, you should definitely subscribe and leave a little like and we will soon have more videos for you. So let us know what kind of places you want us to show and we will do our best to please. We do already have one house tour on this channel and four more over on Jenny's channel from Spain, Ireland and Sweden. We'll leave links below so you can check those out as well. 
Okay, in the dining room you have a beautiful wooden large solid oak table that comfortably would seat 12 or even more people with six chairs and a long bench on one side and you have two skylights above the table which brings in that extra natural light, something that is almost mandatory in these British garden extensions. And this is something that Londoners do so well, the back garden extensions. Full on glass walls and skylights really bring in the daylight in what used to be quite dark and small windowed spaces. Granted, the weather in London isn't known for its pleasantness, but to us, two Swedes, the London weather is practically tropical. And having the opportunity to open this big part of the wall to have this division between outside and inside somewhat disappear is a dream, especially when you're entertaining guests. Being able to move between the kitchen and the garden like this really elevates city life which can often feel like you're so cramped and spending too much time indoors otherwise. Also look at the beautiful antique French dresser right at the end of the table where you can find glasses and things. And then if we turn around towards the fully equipped kitchen, you will see that it's all against one wall with this little clever extension around halfway through the kitchen so that you both get the extra storage space and extra worktop space. This is something we've thought about ourselves for a potential future kitchen because if you've seen the tiny cramped kitchen we have now in our own apartment tour video, you'll get why we think a lot about Max maximizing space in the kitchens. If you have any tips for us to maximize a small kitchen space, let us know. Also, this kitchen has a large oven and stove top with six burners to cook a bunch of dishes for your whole group if you're a foodie like we are. Plus a double sink which might be needed when you have a lot of people over. And whenever Jenny and I travel, we always calculate this in our travel budget because if we have a kitchen in our hotel room or vacation rental, we will save so much money on food. And that means that spending a little bit more on the accommodation is usually worth it because we can cook breakfast and sometimes lunch, sometimes dinner at home. Finally, one more thing about this kitchen, which is probably my favorite thing about the whole place. This floor, it's so gorgeous. It's a bespoke terrazzo made right here in the space and it brings a feeling of cohesiveness since terrazzo was a popular material in the early 1900s, just like the geometric hardwood floor in the hallway. Well, I think the best thing about this open plan kitchen, dining, living room area is the garden. When we go outside, there's a patio with a large table where you can have dinners or your afternoon coffee in the sun. And there's even a little outdoor kitchen here as well so that you can prepare your food outside in its sunny British weather. Well, not today, but you get what I mean. This garden is definitely big enough for a big party to eat or why not play some ping pong in. Yes, there's a ping pong table stowed away that you can bring out for game night. From here we move upstairs to the first floor where we find two spacious double bedrooms with ensuite bathrooms. One of the bathrooms has this beautiful curved tiled wall and a bathtub as well. You can see these tiled bathroom walls throughout the property which is another example of the quirky details of this place. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe this is a zebra pattern, am I right? There's also another double bedroom and an office up here and as I mentioned there's two extra single beds that can be added to any of the rooms if needed. Moving on up to the top floors we have another two double bedrooms with one bathroom and a shower room and could this maybe be a giraffe pattern? Am I right? You don't see that every day. In fact I don't think I've ever seen a bathroom tiled in animal print. So fun and well it's making me feel quite at home. I think that's it for this tour. Let us know what your favorite part of the house is down in the comments and please subscribe to the channel if you're new here. We will have lots more house tours coming up. Don't forget to leave a like on the video. That's always very helpful. Thanks for hanging out today and see you soon. Now I think we might just go and enjoy a cold one in the garden and I'll try to kick Jenny's butt in ping pong. See you next week. Bye bye.